Hey everybody, welcome back to the Reality Wind Down, a podcast where we break down all the latest Bravo TV drama and the biggest pop culture moments of the week, one glass of wine at a time. I'm Chase. I'm Cassidy. I didn't know if I was going to make it this week. Oh my god. Oh. I I went into a mild uh, coma for the past like three days. Like depression, I, coma, detox. You know, just more of a detox, more of like I need sleep, I yeah. need relaxation, I need um, quiet. Yes. And I feel like you included, we've been going, I think since the middle of May. Yeah. All through June. Yeah. All, well now it's like middle of July. I feel like we have not stopped. And a bitch I is just tired. Yeah. And I on Monday was like, you can't catch, you can't find me. Yeah. You will not see me out. You will yeah. not see me in. You will see me nowhere. I, I will be in my through. bed. I literally like had a hoodie on. It's middle of summer. I put my AC down, put a hoodie on, Ooh, like had my yeah. laptop in my bed. And I was like, I am out. Hibernating. I'm out. I'm hibernating. Not doing it. Can't be doing too much. I've literally been leaving my house to like go on runs and walks and that's it the last three days. Yeah. Like I haven't done anything. I had my yeah. groceries delivered. That's it. Like I've just been I chilling. Love, I we need have to do been that. Going I don't know why. You should do that. I don't know I why you don't. Store. It's the best thing ever. Well, because you have like such a good store right by you. You can't walk to the store and get all the things you want. No. So yeah, you should do delivery. It's worth it. I need to. That's really just going to fit my vibe going in for the next couple of weeks, just of doing nothing. <laughs> going Doing the bare minimum. Our... <laughs> I'm, I'm I love to... that we say this, though. We'll do one week of, like, not doing anything. <laughs> and then, you know, next week we'll be like, all right, where are we going? What are we doing? Like... I know. I like to think that I'm not going to do that, but I will. I mean, we did have I a whole year of resting last year. That's so true. we're just, like, making up for lost time. I, I feel like we are making up for lost time, and we're doing a really good job. <laughs> I feel like I've been going hard, but you've been going even harder. But you can survive off of less sleep than me. I feel like um Robin Dixon in your one. <laughs> I and really you can related. survive off of, like, nothing. I really related to Robin this week. Yeah. I was like, girl, I hear you. I feel you. Um, But we'll get into that later. Yes, but yes, yes, yes. to say all of that, I came out. I okay. love talking, and once I start talking, I actually get energy from it. So I'm like, I am ready to go. We have New Potomac. We have so much drama going oh. on. We had two solid episodes this week. The third being New York. Not so solid, right. but we'll, we will mention it. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about. Yes. Very excited. I don't know why I just thought of those dill pickle chips again, but I'm thinking about them. I wish we had some. I should have brought did them. Did you eat all of them? I did. It was just such a random thought. I was like, you... you Brought up the store, and right when you brought up the store, I was like, I should have gotten those. I'm not coming back to your house Jesus anymore unless you have dill pickled puffs. Cheeto puff. <laughs> that's gonna be our centerpiece. Can it's you not imagine we're just like related. snacking on it throughout the podcast? People listening just like <laughs> want to freaking kill us. We're just like, <laughs> <laughs> all like the, the people thing. that we've been trying to like get to listen immediately shut it off and unsubscribe and no, cancel. So, no downloads this week. <laughs> no downloads. <laughs> Oh, before I forget, we actually did get some more five star <gasps> reviews. So did I want to say thank you um, right off the top. Someone's listening. Someone that means someone's listening to the very end. That's all that matters. And they gave us some five star reviews. I think we got like three or four new ones. No way. Yeah. So I'm very excited. It made me so happy. If anything, that brought me out of my. <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I always when I listen to our podcast, I listen on Spotify. I don't think you can rate on Spotify, can you? Like, I'm pretty I don't sure think so. I think it just so has annoying. to be um, Apple Podcasts Apple. or like there's some other like offshoots. I'm not really sure, but like I know Apple is like the main. I feel main like people could line. be out there listening on Spotify like me and then just can't rate it. So if that's the situation, then you know what? Thanks for listening. Yeah, that's all exactly. that really matters. But a five star review is nice, and I'm doing it a little early. But if you have a second, and he'll do it at the end too. We love <laughs> to see it. It feels great. I know we don't. We shouldn't need validation, but sometimes a little validation goes a long way. Well, we do work hard on it, so I <laughs> yeah. do think that a little bit of validation doesn't hurt. But either way, um, we appreciate you listening. Yeah. Well, I think we should dive into the yes. fiery pits of our hot takes this week yes. because, guys, y'all know this number one. Well, yeah, maybe it's debatable. The number one, right off the bat, Southern Charm drama, Naomi. Was cheated on by Matul. Are you surprised? I like, cheating maybe, but their relationship breaking up. I'm not surprised. Right. Like I always felt like to her, she was one of those girls that was like, I'm either gonna be with a doctor or a lawyer, and that's it. You need to be that. You need to fit into my mold. Like I am a successful businesswoman. I want this. I either want a doctor or a lawyer. Like completely discrediting their super successful like 
other business owners. There's like a thousand other billion careers that you can have and still be super successful and super mm-hmm. wealthy. And she only wanted a doctor or a lawyer. Craig wasn't giving that to her. The irony now that he runs a law firm. And, <laughs> and a successful pillow company. Insane. Oh, did you see on his Instagram? It's Chris. He made, did like a little Christmas in July pop up. It looks so uh, cute. So right smart. Now. He's doing that pillow company alone is like genius. Like getting a product, I especially say overpriced. I was like, yes. Oh, very overpriced. <laughs> but did I already buy one yes. right when it came out? Yes, I did. And I love it. And that. is the quality still there? Yeah. That's what so, matters. It's you worth know? paying more. You know me. I'm a yeah. bargain bitch. Um, but yes, I am not surprised that they've split. Surprised to see that she moved to New York and then two weeks later, allegedly, Wild. there have been like some, she had seen some text messages between him and an ex and um, she's made it very clear that she doesn't want anyone sending him hate on Instagram, but this is like the most shattered she's been. And she will not go back to him. She made that very yes. clear. Y'all don't need her. Y'all don't need to attack him because I can handle my own business and I will not be going back to him. Badass. So she has spoken. She also spoke that a cat has been taking care of her. Oh, Did no, you see that? Yes. I mean, guys, that's why we have animals. Not why we have animals, but that's why we love animals so much. We give them love. They give us love that's right back. That's literally what I posted on our Instagram. Love I was like, it. this is why we love our animals. They look after us. Yep. But Naomi did post, nothing will be worse. Like, I thought nothing would be worse than losing my dad, but this is a close second. Betrayal is never easy for anyone, and I'm just so sorry to anyone else that has stumbled across those terrible messages. And did I try to find the terrible messages? Yes. Could not, unfortunately. I think, okay, so what I took by that was like, if you were ever in this situation and you went through your boyfriend's phone and you okay. found those messages, I, that sucks for you to have to ever go through them. Oh, so that's you don't what think I took from it. I don't. Messages? I think she did find one. Okay. I don't think that they're out there and that anyone like came across them that were Matul's messages. I think it was like if gotcha. it was um, if you if say if I went through someone's phone and I found it, they're like I, she's like I hate that you would have to go through that. Right. Like what I went through, kind that's, of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I mean, how mature of her though to not blast them everywhere? I'm I so like spiteful. I was been, like, I interested in reading them yeah i mean somewhat i just want to know what he was doing i'm curious it's bad i'm sad for her it really sucks but i do kind of hope she comes back to southern charm i know and then she can spill all the tea on it yeah i want it really bad i liked naomi i thought she was annoying when she was with craig but now that she's like not with craig and also a badass business owner and blah blah it would be kind of interesting to see their dynamic as like two successful people post relationships you know Craig's like years full on dating page right now yeah oh my god I keep seeing them like in New York yes. like hugging each other outside of Cuddling restaurants up. and blah 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 and I'm like okay I'm sorry though I don't need this crossover so much like no? they were just no not no them dating whatever yeah. but I don't need them on each other's shows this much because they just showed Craig is filming in the summer house too Oh, oh, that makes sense. He probably came to visit her for like yeah. the weekend. And then but it's like, okay, somewhere. we're doing the winter house thing and they're all going to be together. Yeah. Now we're going to do the summer house thing and he's going to be there too. It's like, we don't need it's a little too, and then we're going to have Southern Charm again. It's like, we don't need them this yeah. much. No, that I'm kind of with you on like, that. Like, I like them in little spurts, I but like I can't I like need Craig that energy more. too much. I'm good with more Craig and like a little less Paige because sometimes Paige is just so like, I like Paige, don't get me wrong, but she's like so specific. That sometimes it's hard to like take a lot of her at times, but I don't know. We'll see how she is about Hannah too. I think it could be a very oh page. interesting. I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, sorry. Back to Naomi and Matul. Really sad for Naomi, but I was shocked at how our comments have been so divided on this. Oh 50%, really? Oh my god, fifty percent of people are like, she had it coming. She's oh. the biggest B ever. Can't stand the way she treated Craig. And the other fifty percent were like, this is so sad. Like for Naomi. And I can't believe she's having to deal with this. Okay, I'm not saying she was nice to Craig, mm-hmm. but also, what the fuck was Craig doing at that moment in the lives? Like, True. he wasn't doing anything. He, he wasn't was going working. through something, and he should have just expressed and been like, look, I don't think law is my passion. I want to yeah. figure out what I'm going to do. Instead, he just kind of, like, piddled around, and it drove her nuts, because she is someone who's and so laser And she's trying to, like, well, she was trying at that time. She did make it happen. Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of have to be like, oh, are you yeah. not going to go on this journey with me and try your hardest? But the thing is... People should be thanking Naomi for being mean to him. Because I feel like when someone's mean to you and breaks up with you, that's the biggest motivator. Yeah. And look what he's done now. Get run over, call Con over. Exactly. Like, or has... and get run over, lay on one of my pillows so your head doesn't be on the cement. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. That actually kind of rhymed. That was kind of amazing. I'll, I'll workshop that. but We're working on that one. But the... But right? You kind of have to be like, Naomi, thank you. Yeah. Craig she did is... kind of get his ass in gear. Exactly. You're Sometimes you need that little... 
pep in the step or a kick in the ass. And she definitely gave him that. <laughs> yeah. And she is... Um, so that's interesting. People are so divided. Yeah, people are, like I said, it's literally 50-50. Half cannot stand her and say she's apparently the biggest bitch ever. One of our followers that lives in Charleston said, like, she heckled his store. Oh, I mean, that's wild. she went to, like, the grand opening and kind of, like, heckled it or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But we shall see moving forward how that plays yeah, out. Yeah, I'm curious. Very interested. Um, our next hot take, guys. <laughs> I know y'all don't want to talk about her anymore, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. Yeah, I think it's a quick one, too. Yes. Um, Bronwyn, Wyndham Burke, um, and her husband have been hit with a lawsuit of $45,000 in unpaid rent on their house. Um, of course, they've responded, their camps responded and been like, there's absolutely nothing true to this. This is all false, blah, blah, blah. blah. But, I mean, it's been filed as, as a civil suit. So. I feel like there has to be some sort of uh, evidence that this lady would go to court and file a lawsuit. Exactly. Why would she do that if they were paying rent? Like, like what would, it, what would, what would she gain from that? Exactly. She's going to have to spend legal fees to get... Exactly, to evict sense. them. To I mean, yeah, that yeah. makes no sense. There's definitely some truth there. It was filed by Karen Ogden, the owner of the Newport Beach Mansion... It is on the market um, for five point eight million dollars, I think. Um, as well, I don't see that on here. That's like something like that. Sounds like I saw that, but they were paying fifteen thousand dollars a month in rent, so they have now missed three payments, um, and that's what she was. Claiming. Also insane, fifteen thousand dollars. That's actually more than what Erica's paying on her like house in Guys, uh, Erica. That backyard was the <laughs> cutest thing I'd ever seen. I in my know, in her life. tiny house that she said it again. It's tiny and little and so small. I know. Once again, we'll Whatever. get into that, but it <laughs> yeah. pisses me off so much. I'm like, Ugh, yeah. But also, on top of that, they did announce their separation, trial separation, uh, Braun went in. Are we surprised by that? No, not I at mean, all. It's... Can we just move on from them? Yes. yes. We just had to mention that. And Kelly Dodd. It's been in general, like, life. Oh. Like, I'm so ready for that phase of housewives. And I know we don't want to speak of her either, but Kelly Dodd, she shared this article to her Instagram story <laughs> and put, like, ha-ha, something like that, laughing what about psycho. it. psycho. Kelly Dodd is literally, like, a seven-year-old... She's a Trump troll. Supporter, troll. She's a troll. She's a QAnon troll that's like 12 years old that like sits <laughs> in her mom's basement. Like that's like the vibe she gives uh, off. What do they call the like, keyboard warriors or yes, whatever? Yes, she is like a keyboard troll, keyboard warrior. Yeah, whatever, whatever they call that, that's what yes. Kelly Dodd is. <laughs> she is that 100%. Um, our next hot take, just a quick one we found a little bit interesting. Erica Jane turned 50 this week. And Dorit also had a birthday, and Rena also had a birthday, but they were all on a boat, like, Instagramming, like, playing It's Expensive to Be Me, dancing on the boat. Just, so with, like, in bad so taste. So messed up. Yeah. I, well, like, like, they should still be her friend. But of course. Like, I'm not saying they shouldn't be friends, but it's, yeah. like, highlighting just, like, a song that literally is bragging about you being rich and, like, all this money that you spend just to be... But now you're crying low with me, star, like, like, girl that doesn't have anything anymore in her yeah. tiny little house. It's, like, yeah. pick a lame. Very much so pick a lane. And also, it's kind of just, like, frustrating because her persona on the show right now is very, like you said, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. But on Instagram and, like, Twitter, she's still being, like, kind of, like, sassy, like shady. Like, cold, like, yeah, and I'm like, queen bee. Okay, we aren't going to feel bad for you on the show whenever you're wanting no. us to feel bad for you. But when we, because we see you on social media, you're being... You look Rude on so unbothered. Like, you look like you're like, I'm fine. I uh, don't know. We'll get into that yeah, more, too. But um, it is interesting to see that. They're all, like, that, out there partying. Like, and y'all are flaunting most. stuff that's a little inappropriate right now. Erica, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Uh, also, a quick one. Want to get your thoughts on this. Cameron Westcott is returning to the Real Housewives of Dallas. Thoughts? Are you surprised? I kind of actually am surprised. I'm super surprised. I do don't know why I guess they want to see her and Tiffany go after each other because I think it was confirmed that Deandra and Tiffany are coming back yes. too. Those are the only three so far. Cameron, Deandra, and, there's and Tiffany. there's a new housewife. She's Jewish and she has like a pretty large social media presence. She has like 200,000 Okay, I think they've already. been posting a few pictures with like Tiffany with her yes. and I think Deandra with her. Like so it must be um, on, she'll be on their side it seems like so far just from some of the leaked photos okay not leaked photos i think they posted like them instagram um chase had the the secret leak he went up to deandra's instagram <laughs> account breaking news special <laughs> reporting chase like i went to deandra's instagram it was a picture of tiffany the new girl and deandra i did my research <laughs> i went on instagram and i found a photo I okay live. okay that's the most okay. report. <laughs> calm down carol rasville the we'll most... send you to like the, the war zone next to cover it <laughs> I'll be in my picture, like, crouching down, like, uh, I think about that photo uh, all the time. 
Like, after all the Erica Jane drama broke, and, like, we posted a meme that was like that. It was, like, me after the last 24 hours investigating. And it's, like, Carol leaning down. And Carol commented, and she was, like, she, like laughed or something. I don't know. It was weird. But it, hey, investigative reporter hey. over here. Um, and my biggest uh, source is Instagram. Honestly, though, this next one, you kind of are an investigative reporter for this next hot take. I mean... Britney Spears news. I Give mean... It to us. Update is, she went back to court on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And they are allowing her to get her own lawyer. Yes, this is she, big. That's huge. That's a huge win for her. Um, but another crazy thing is she, quote, I'm here to get rid of my dad and charge him for conservatorship abuse. I want to press charges for abuse on this conservatorship, conservatorship today for all of it. Gosh. Um, so she is not backing down. She also Good. said this conservatorship has allowed my dad to ruin my life. Um, I thought they were trying to kill me. Um, the conservatorship is cruelty. What do you? It's th- insane. My dad needs to be removed today. What do you think of the stuff with the boyfriend? Because I am like, okay, the more we've gotten into this, the more like research I've done as well. Mm-hmm. Carol Radzivill did. Um, what do you think of the boyfriend? Do you think he's part of the bad side or do you think he's the good side? Because I've seen some really conflicting stuff. Like he posted a picture of them recently. I don't know if you saw this. I feel like you probably did. Where it was, like, of them hiking in a trail, right? Mm-hmm. And they made it look like it was, like, this week. And then people went back through her Instagram and it was from, like, a year and a half ago. So do you think he's trying to paint it like things are normal and, like, he's on the bad side? So what I heard with that was, like, the there was something posted on Instagram, on her Instagram. It, so he posted a story that contradicted the Instagram because he was trying to show that she doesn't run her social media necessarily. Right. So... That's what I saw. I don't know like, that he was trying to expose that someone else is running her social media because like she also like like posted a video of them like working out on the beach whenever her post was like also somewhere else. It's like something weird oh, like that. Okay, because I saw something that was like, okay. That does make sense. Like you're saying they were doing something else and someone's running her social. Yeah. But there was like a so he posted that- like a story to like contradict that Well, like i saw a picture that she had posted like a year and a half ago where her hair was like a specific way and like you could tell like these pictures were taken on. it was like the same outfit and then he posted it like this week so i was like why is he posting her thing from a year ago um i think so like insane i feel like it's like a sims simulation and we're all just like trying to figure out what's going on because there's so so much to it and there's so much more coming out yeah um but to answer your question i think he is team good he's team Brittany. Okay. I think he's kind of said that he's made um, like alluded to that a lot over the past years, but he's probably never wanted to say anything. So we'll just jeopardize Your her gosh, because yeah. like, especially in this conservatorship, she has no choice. She had no freedom. So if he talks out, yeah. I feel like she gets punished for it. So I feel like he hasn't, okay. but I was listening to bitch sesh and Casey Wilson, who was the host on there also works on black Monday okay. and he was on black Monday. Britney's boyfriend. Okay. And he said, or she said that he is so tight-lipped, he won't talk about Britney, he won't mention her, he that's... won't, and I feel like that's very, like, telling to, yeah. like, if he was using her or something, I feel like he would be like, right. yeah, my girlfriend's Britney Spears. I mean, everyone knows it, but you know what I mean? Like, right. I feel like he'd be talking about Honestly, her and blah, blah, blah. Honestly, if I had run into him on the street, I wouldn't have really known who he was. Okay, well then, so, yeah. So, like, that's actually, like, really valid. Yeah, so okay. I think her saying that, because she was like, I wanted to know stuff, I want to know yeah. about Britney Spears, not about that necessarily, just, yeah. like, Britney Spears in general. She's still an icon. an icon. Yeah. So and she was like, he's so tight lipped, won't mention her. Well, that's good, like then. mention like, oh, I'm going and doing this, like stuff like that, but not anything personal, not anything like, hey. Yeah. And Brittany, I feel like she would have you know? said in this, and I also want like, you know, this relationship with him to not you know, or something like that. Yeah. But okay. Good. So that's I, good I to think know. She's I was wondering that. Yeah, so I mean I think this is a big win. I'm happy she got to speak out again. She did give a lot of credit to her fans. She posted on Instagram. That she's so blessed. She finally has some real representation. Um, thank you to my fans for supporting me. You have no idea what it means to me to be sp- supported by such awesome fans. Aww. God bless you all. This is me celebrating my horseback riding and doing cartwheels. Oh, oh my God. What a queen. That is so brilliant. Yeah, so I, I feel like that. she's moti- or she's been motivated, but she's I feel like she's reaping the benefits of her she's stepping up, standing out. Now. Yes, so she gets a private lawyer, and she is back in court 
September 29th. Okay, that's not too far off. That's... Not too far off. So I think things are speedy. I mean... Good, and she can get her lawyer on it now, and they can, like, really yeah. start diving and getting it all together. And the lawyer even the lawyer even kind of said, he was like, this conservatorship was probably never necessary. No. I yeah. think it could have been a temporary one for five minutes. There you go. Temporary. But it should have never been, like, a permanent until she's 40 years old. And again, I always go back to it. How can someone be in a conservatorship for being, you know, going through... Mental, mental health, health problems yeah. and then immediately go back on tour six months later exactly pick a lane it's like we you always can't, say yeah. it's like if you're, you're either going to say she's too you know in too bad of a space to perform or she's totally fine and you're gonna let her be on her own just make her own yeah. decision and i always just remember that i was like that should have been so the true. red flag to her family to whoever supported her to whoever was around her they're making her go out on tour six months after her breakdown but that's okay yeah, that's unreal. So that's what I always think of. But unreal. You know what? Win for the Free Britney movement. She even posted Free Britney on her Instagram Aww. today. So she's she feels the love. I can't wait to keep giving her that love. And I'm I'm excited. I think this is a first step in a very, you know, promising journey for her. So 100%. I'm very excited. Well, that's a good positive Britney update this Yes, week. it is. Very positive. So Good things go, are happening. We're going to go from the positive to, guys, what the hell? <laughs> I know y'all have probably been like, are they not even going to talk about this in Hot Takes? We are just going to dedicate a segment to this. We're not even going to cover the full episode of New York this week. We're going to break down Potomac and Beverly Hills. But we are just going to say, what the hell is going on in the Real Housewives of New York? It's a true Ramona coaster. It is a Ramona <laughs> coaster. Like, there are so many sources and there are so many. I do not know what the heck is happening. So we've got reports that Ramona is being fired and let go and everyone's panicking behind the scenes and they're pushing the reunion back to September and they're not going to start filming the new season until 2022. Um, yeah, like, I mean, even just the fact that they're, I, this, I can't imagine this ever happening, but the fact that there's even talks that the, re- the reunion's canceled altogether. Like, that's because apparently Ramona said if she is fired, this is again allegedly, I don't know if this is true, she wouldn't show up for the reunion because she knows she's just going to get like a backlash and yeah. she doesn't want to deal with it. She's like, why would I even show up then? It doesn't matter. 764,000 live viewers for the episode last week. The lowest it's ever, a lowest episode ever for New York. Uh-huh. And also, I think they even said that like some of the Secrets Revealed episodes have had higher viewership than No <laughs> like, way. It's bad. Like the never before scene that comes on before Yeah, episode. shit like that like has gotten like It's more. really, it's just like apparently everything's being delayed. Ramona is denying the firing. People are demanding Leah gets fired instead. <laughs> Sonia went it missing. It is a full blown <laughs> shit show. Like, <laughs> I feel so. bad for whoever's behind the scenes having to deal with this literal Ramona shit show right now. <laughs> My favorite part was that they were just like, in Ramona, or not Ramona, and Sonia's nowhere to be found. It's like, of course Sonia's nowhere to be that found. That is, you know that she's probably, you know she came to Austin like earlier this year and hiked mm-hmm. for like six weeks. She's probably back in Austin. <laughs> we should go to Austin this weekend and try to find Sonia. Yeah. Like, hey, we're coming to take you we're back to like, care of you. Where's Sonia poster <laughs> trying to find her all over Austin? Like over like Lady Bird Lake or whatever she's like kayaking yes. and it's like oh, she's, she's just like, oh floating god, in it she's just <laughs> relaxing she's like oh my god that's me that's me um i mean i feel like we don't know what the hell's going on so we're just gonna go over a few things that happened on this week's episode like ebony kind of like she was she wanted to make a statement to the table about something that she was dealing with and so immediately leah starts crying and this is when i was wild like, what a bur- i understand leah's going through something like she just lost her grandma but to burst out in tears whenever it's, um, Ebony's trying to say what she's feeling was weird to me. Really out of touch. Yeah. Like, really trying to steal the moment. Um, Ebony did say her grandmother had just passed away. The night before or something. Or that morning. It was, <laughs> like, morning. wild. It was that morning. And I just hate... I kind of just let a little giggle because I said that. And then my next note was Ramona shit on the floor again. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's how my note goes. And then, then Ramona shit on the floor just again. Just a weird <laughs> jump, too. And then Ramona was like, no, it was just makeup on the floor. It was just makeup on the floor. That Girl, was a chunk of something. Like, that's a hell of a contour <laughs> if that's what you were doing with your makeup. It was very thick. Ugh. And then we're just no. going to skip over the next part and get to the very end dinner. Bershawn, what are what? What? I don't know how but I also feel. Sonia. That's what like it got like, so bizarre that I wasn't on either team, me right? Me either. Bershawn was just like, I thought this was gonna be more of a fun trip. You guys are acting like grandmas, which she's not wrong. Like, yeah, I mean, I do think Bershawn was coming in with like a I'm gonna 
make a scene. I'm going to do this. It seemed very calculated. I don't know. Okay, maybe it wasn't, like, premeditated. Okay. But there was a certain point where I was like, okay, girl, you, you said it. Like, you went for it. You right. came at them. Now back away. But she persisted through the entire night. And as we see into the new, next That's episode, it was, like, super it was a order. little too much. I liked it when she started doing it. I was like, oh, yeah. call them out. Say they're boring, blah, blah, blah. Do, do what and you like, need to do. You, like, they could be. I mean, Ramona is mid-60s. Like, they could very well have grandchildren. <laughs> well, like, Victoria yeah. could have a kid. Avery no, could have I a know. kid. Quincy could have a kid. Like, being called, like, grandmas isn't the worst thing on the planet. No, I mean, like, that's they not... act like they just got called something terrible. Exactly. And I don't think it was that big of a deal. But, like, also, Sonia was kind of being a mess after that. And, like, oh, they started I... just screaming at each other at that moment. And then Rashawn tells Sonia she's a clown. And then Luli and Sonia come back at Brashawn for calling her a clown, but Ramona doesn't. And then Ramona gets up and goes and dances on a table like an actual clown for no yeah. reason. I like, mean, Sonia, whenever she drank that wine through her mask, was kind of like a carny move. It was <laughs> so, honestly, like, I still don't understand how I she I don't did know it. how that happened. She literally how took she did it that. and then no slit. Because I was trying, I went back and rewatched it three or four yeah, times. I, and I was like, is there a slit in the mask? I did not see it. No. She just full on sucked it into her mask. Like, I don't know how. Not a drop. And that was a half a glass. Well, Ramona would take another sip of her wine and then she went. It was gone. (laughs) Like, what the hell just happened? I just, okay. It was all weird. And I think, okay, I think that's the problem. It's no one particular, like, I I don't, I don't pinpoint anyone as the problem. Right. It's just all weird. Right. Something's just off in general. Yeah. Like, it goes from, like, serious conversations to, like, blackout drunkenness in the matter of five seconds and i think that like whiplash is hard to like and i don't even think it's editing. i think that's genuinely how it goes no, down I think and so that's too. scary it's weird so it's like i think people are just confused it's like what yeah is the show right now like what well, is the message like you know i think people are confused with well don um, gunvalson you know the fake don gunvalson yeah i love that twitter, account. which is honestly if you guys don't follow fake don gunvalson on twitter <laughs> follow so us first and then follow them because they're hilarious <laughs> Don't know who they are, but um, they tweeted and said, the issue with New York this season is it feels like two different shows. Like, it's two different casts for two different yeah, shows. Yeah, that's a good and point. And it's trying to force them together. And that was the first time I'd really seen someone, like, it seems so basic, but it's so true. It's, like, it's a completely different cast. I mean, because it's literally, like, Sonia is straddling the lines a little bit. Yeah. But, like, it's really Sonia, Lou, Ramona yes. against the other girls. And so New York, moving forward, it needs to pick a lane. They need this more the, housewives. The theme of tonight's episode is pick a lane. I've said this, like, five <laughs> times. Is they need to either go that way or they need to go that way. And whichever way they go, I don't want to say it's fine because... Okay, I posted on our Instagram, if you guys could have five housewives from any seasons of New York, who would it be? Like, and who would you like to see? I honestly would want Tinsley back. Okay. I like Tinsley. You know I like Tinsley. Tinsley. Um, I always and go back and forth with Carol Radzawell. Okay, Carol. Uh, I, get, I go back and forth with her. Dorinda, I go back and forth with. Like, if she's not, like, because the thing is, I don't need more, like, insanity, right. like, energy, like, Sonia's bringing. Right. And that, and I can't handle Sonia and, and Dorinda, Dorinda and... like that. So that's where I get a little confused with her but I think like steadfast like I would say Tinsley for sure maybe Carol and um I don't know but I don't know really past that I don't want Bethany back I know a lot of people probably want Bethany back and like there's a rumor swirling now once again allegedly that Bethany could be returning she's always allegedly coming back especially now that all her stuff's falling through at like HBO I could see her coming back again I wouldn't be surprised either if I'll the money watch was it, right, but... she'd be like, I came in and saved the show. Like, you know, her... that she... hashtag yeah. this is a crisis. She does that every time. <laughs> be strong. Be strong. But you it's know what? Crisis. She does, like, think that. She thinks that she's the key to New York. And I don't think she is. She's not. I just think there's not enough housewives on the mm-hmm. show. Casting has been interesting. Just because they're not casting enough people. Yeah. And, like, Leah, like you said, is so opposite of the other girls. She's not meshing. She's too young. And they're too, like, I'm not saying they're old, but they're in their 60s. Well, there's Leah's like in her 30s. Places. It doesn't make sense. Like, how do you connect on that? Literally, like, that's, like, you're you're so right on that. It's, like, one of those things that they need to either, I think they thought when they casted Leah and Ramona together, it was going to be like, look at this juxtaposition. And, like, they're going to be at it in this way. Yes. It's just not worked like that. It's just so much, like, Leah's like, God, Ramona's the most annoying on the pla- uh, most annoying person on the planet. And then... You know, like, they just keep doing that back and forth. That's not fun to yeah. watch. I will say one thing that threw me with Ebony this episode is um, 
she's like letting Ramona off the hook so easy every time. She's like, I love you, girl. We're like, I love you. We're great friends. Like, you know, every, like, I'm just like, yeah, you can't, you can't be exposing Ramona as kind of like not a great person, which you don't have to expose her because we yeah, already know that. Yeah. But it's like, that can't be what's happening. And then be like, girl, but I love you. You're great. I, you know, I respect you. You know, I like you. You know, all this. And I'm like, it doesn't ah, make, make it, it make doesn't make sense. sense. So it's like, it's, that's what I'm saying. All of it's confusing. Yeah. There's no specific thing that's like, oh, I can pinpoint as to why. Because it's like, I, I don't think Ebony's bad. I like Ebony. Like, it's fine. It's just nothing's meshing. Yeah, it's just, I it's, feel like every time I watch an episode of New York, my head is in a tizzy whirl spin and I'm just like I don't know what's happening I'm no idea what just happened yeah and you don't know what to think yeah you don't know where it's going but also weirdly it always in the same ends up in the same place yeah. Sonia being drunk yeah and yelling at people and not making any sense Ramona making an ass of herself yeah it's it's becoming too um repetitive predictable predictable yeah. exactly and it's like why why? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> we'll be very curious to see. We just want to give a few notes on New York this week. We didn't want to spend too much time on it. I feel like we just spent 20 minutes on it. I know. Because that's what we always do when we say we're not going to spend a lot of time on things. <laughs> yeah, we do it anyway. <laughs> but we will see where it heads. We uh, shall see. We shall see. I think we should go into the game this week. Oh, it's yeah. Entitled, Who Planned That? Where we are matching the housewife to the trip they plan. And Chase just got like a yellow little post-it <laughs> note. Is that what the game is on? Yeah. Oh my god. And we thought we were high-tech now. Ass. We brought our iPads in and I thought we were high-tech now. But Chase just busted out a little yellow post-it note. I forgot note. to type it up. And I was like, you know what? Taking her old school. Taking her pen to paper. I want you pen to, to paper. I want you to give me the first one then. Because I want you to read off of this little yellow post <laughs> Okay, paper. so are we doing... Okay, so obviously I have the location. Yes. And like where it's at. Is that all we're doing? So I just said like the season, what franchise, and how many people planned it. Sometimes two people planned okay, it. Okay, because there was one. a few that I saw that yeah. were like multiples. And I remember that one. I didn't write it down because I didn't know if we were doing that. Okay. But Maybe we'll do that as a bonus because I remember. Okay, it. so just say like the season, the franchise, and the location. Okay, I didn't do the season for all of them, That's but okay, we're gonna go with it. But anyways, the first one I did. So this okay. is season nine, Punta Mita, Mexico. And the franchise. Oh, franchise, uh, New York. Punta Mita, Punta Mita. I I feel like I'm gonna really struggle on these, and I think Chase is gonna take the victory this week. These are hard. When yeah. I was looking them up, even I was like, I remember all the trips, but it's so hard to think who planned it. Punta Mita, Mexico. That was last season, I think. No, season, season nine? nine. Oh my god, I don't... Oh, is it the one after Bethany had all those bleeding issues? And then she ended up planning it? Well, they went to Tequila, Mexico, in that one. But maybe they also went to Punta Mita. I'm gonna guess Bethany. Yes. And remember, they flew to Tequila. They okay. didn't stay in Tequila. That's okay, and yeah. And I thought this one was a little bit hard because, of you know, it's Kyle's Punta Mita all the time. But that's actually an interesting connection is it because Kyle like, Puerto Vallarta or is she Punta Mita? Well, I think they changed it Punta Mita because like he oh. opened a agency there. Okay, okay. Um, and I think aren't Kyle and Bethany friends? At least they used to be. So that actually remember, could be a clue. I remember being shocked that it was Dorinda's first time going to Mexico. I specifically mm. remember that because I was like, we always think, especially because we're here in Texas, it's so easy to like, go to Mexico, mm-hmm. go to the beaches, and enjoy it. She's like, I always go to the Bahamas or like the, the islands I'd never been. Before. I mean, that's valid because it's like that's more like south, uh, yeah. like in the sense of like direction from New York and Mexico is pretty far over. I just always think um, of like Americans traveling to the Mexico yeah. beaches, and but yeah. But yeah, so you're correct. I got that it was one Bethany. Right. All right. The B planned it for her a little alcohol fuel <laughs> trip. Um, are you ready for your first one? I am. Season three, Real Housewives of Orange County, Iceland. Iceland. Okay. Obviously, remember the trip. Um, <laughs> I that doesn't... rolled out with a <laughs> towel over her head. Yes. That was because she had stayed up drinking for three straight days because it never gets dark in Iceland. <laughs> my, one of my favorite scenes is. <laughs> <laughs> just a blanket <laughs> over know. her head. So She's like, girl, what do you think you're achieving here? So iconic. And eating, I think they ate like, what was it? Like shark or something? Fermented Black shark? Black death. Ooh. It was fermented Ugh. shark and like a vodka thing. And then they went out and party with the locals till 3 a.m. I don't remember. Okay. But I'm going to go with um, Tamara. No, Lydia, because her oh, I... husband's magazine. There yes, was... you're right. 
they were going to do a little trip there to scout it for travel. You know how much I think about Lydia? Never. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, think about the person you never think about and then think about them less than that. That's how much I think about Lydia. Exactly. Her sparkle is not interesting to me. He is staying out of her rainbow. Not happening. So you know what? I'm happy I got that one wrong because I don't even want to think about Lydia. There we go. All right. That's how I'm going to justify it. Give me my next one. Okay. I don't know the season on this one, but it's it's a newer one. The ones you give me seasons on, I will give you and ones you don't give me, I won't give you. How's that sound? I don't know what you just said. (laughs) What did you say? (laughs) My brain can't be working that fast. What? Whenever you give me seasons because you're asking first, I'll give you seasons as well. When you don't, just like even the playing field. Yes, okay, fair, fair, fair. That time I got. You don't be in competition. I don't play around. I'm like, (laughs) like, nope, I'm cracking my nose. No extras. I just gave you a little knuckle cracking ASMR on it, so you're welcome. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Real Housewives of Atlanta, Tokyo. So I think that was like season 12. Um, yeah, that was super recent. And I remember that Marlo and Eva got into it. I think that Eva planned this trip. Correct. Okay. You don't even need to continue. Yeah. Correct. Because I remember that her grandfather was passing away and she yeah. flew back. And I just remember mm-hmm. she read Marlo to filth on the Because <laughs> Marlo, none of her shit showed up. Yes. So she had her yes. wig was like falling off. Yes. Oh my God. I think that was like one of the only seasons Eva wasn't pregnant. So, and then she went home and got pregnant, I think. And I think for the next two seasons, and then she was fired. So, I kind of don't blame her though, because she has the prettiest children. I mean, <laughs> like, they're gorgeous. love a child for you, but like, it's don't come on the come Housewives up. and have a baby. Like, it's not interesting to watch, and especially because she was Eva the Diva, yeah. she had a reputation for yeah. reading people to filth. And when you're pregnant, it's just not, yeah, it's not the move. It's different on whenever you follow show. the housewife, like Candy, we've been following her for so long, and then like she got pregnant and have her kids, like it was different. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, Candy never drank in the first place, so we never like worried about her turning up in that way, and so also, she could still do it And also, her pregnant. second kid was like, via surrogate, true. so like, she was like, I'm also not going to be doing That's too much. That's also true. That's very true. <laughs> so I was like, good. I mean, good that you had your kids and all that. It's just not something that we want to watch all the time. I'm not going to argue Because I guess we could that. say that about Portia, because Portia also had... But she was um, on for a while before she. That's what I mean. I think yeah. that's why, because like Eva only had her one season and then started having kids. You're like, yeah. oh girl, we don't know you enough. We have to be invested in you more first to watch okay. the journey. Well, you were right. So okay, season one, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That's season one, woo! Location is New York. Oh, that was definitely Camille for the premiere party. Yes. This honestly, one of the saddest episodes of TV I've ever seen because that was whenever she was doing um, the premiere party. For Kelsey's play. It was the Tonys. Oh, it was the Tonys. Yeah. And she was in that beautiful red dress in a stunning apartment. And the voiceover of her getting out of the car, I was like, and he told me that we don't, he wants us to end. It was like in the car or something. Do you, know, do you remember whenever she first got there, she said, I went to go to the pet, our penthouse in New York and I walked up and they said, excuse me, who are you? And she was like, yes, I'm Mrs. Grammer. And they were what, like, yeah. no, you're not Mrs. Grammer. Mr. Gr- Mrs. Grammer is someone else. She's like, uh, no. Here, and so I had to show my ID. I was like, just, oh God. And then the voiceover, she was, and she kept trying to like hug him and you could just tell that he was so turned off. And we found out in the was, end that he basically had her come because he didn't want the press only asking questions yeah, about where she and was. And that was like the voiceover of her in the stunning gown yeah. on the red carpet with him. He's like kissing her. Ugh, it's like that's... like we talked about last week beverly hills season one was really like a real high and low <laughs> and real and a real documentary style show wild but yes Ugh. camille grammar good job got it okay right. all right give it to me saint bart's new york season five oh i struggle with these because i get all the saints like and they've been to a lot they of they saints on time. that I want to say this is the one with, um, although season five, hmm, 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 hmm. who planned to, I'm definitely not going to get this Ooh, one right. Who planned I'm that? Gonna I'm going to say, oh, was this the one Carol Radzival planned? Yes, how the hell do you know her that? Her boyfriend Russ was playing <laughs> with Aerosmith as a guitarist. Yes, and then she went back to like a house. And she was like, this is where I used to come stay with Anthony. All right. It's all just came together in my brain. Annoying. I thought I had one. That is when it just all came together. <laughs> and that's whenever Lou banged the pirate. Right. Yes. Yeah. Correct. I clearly watched Straw Housers of New York about 72 times. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why through. do I even ask New York ones? You should have just given me like <laughs> Jersey. And I still probably. You have one Jersey. Aww. But okay. Good job. <sighs> okay. Are you ready? I am. 
Season 8, Real Housewives of Orange County. Okay. Whistler is the location. Who? I have never been with multiple partners in my life. Yeah. Honestly, Vicky's given us a few iconic scenes on trips. She has. I mean, Vicky's... Vicky, Psychotic, but she but gives us there's some, some moments. Yeah, exactly. Very Ramona energy. Mm-hmm. Where it's like you can't... Big we Ramona hate Ramona energy. so much, but she's given us some insane moments that are memorable. Oh. So Whistler... What season was that? Eight. Eight. Um, Whistler, Whistler. I feel like one of them had like a house there or something. Um, I don't know, but... Give it to me. I don't even remember the cast, honestly, for that season. I'm just going to say Tamara. It was Lydia again. She Lydia was, again? I love when you said I'm never thinking about Lydia, and I knew I had another Lydia lined up on here to try to throw you. And I was I like, I mean, genius okay, plan. This because is going to go well. She was again. from Whistler. She had a house there in Canada. See, I remember someone having a house there, and that's why they went. But Lydia, was it? No, it was not, because I don't think about Lydia. You came here for the Lydia content today, didn't you? Yeah, Lydia. <laughs> off. <laughs> Chase has personal beef with Lydia. That's all I'm hearing right now, and I'm so here for it. I mean, I already hated her. I already forgot about her, and now she's making me lose this damn game. You want to know the hate that I have for her now? I really have beef now. Oh, man. Okay, well, you know what? We're moving right along. Give me my next one. Give it to me. Real Housewives of Potomac, Cayman Islands. Don't remember the season. I think it was season two, though. Cayman Islands... I'm probably not going to get it right. Um, I'll guess Robin. Yeah. What the fuck? Really? Is yes. that the one where they were like, Robin would be late to her own trip? She was late to her own trip. Yes. Okay. Okay. She like did oh! it, which I never understood how you could be late to your own trip, but also why they weren't all flying together or like, I mean, she I missed they the were flight. All, yeah. Yeah. I think she missed the flight that they were supposed to get there. Insane. And she was too. Thank you, Robin, for always being late and putting that in my brain because I otherwise it, would not have gotten that. It's funny because I think one time we played like, like where did the cast go or something like that? Yeah. And that was it. And I was like, I literally completely forgot the Cayman Islands I existed totally on did that show. I that too. That it's, trip is so not in my mind for some reason. Well, I except like the I Robin being late it thing. I've watched a hundred times. Like I have a lot yes, of the other ones. Exactly. Okay, are you ready for your next? I one? am. Season four, Beverly Hills. Location: Puerto Rico. Beverly Hills, Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, Beverly Hills, Puerto Rico. Um, hmm. Good question. Thank I, you so much. I love the way you're asking this question. Thank you so much. I commend you for, Practicing you know. a different voice. Yeah, for, you know, pushing me, challenging me, really making me think, it's making me point. realize that I haven't watched it enough. And you know what? Whenever I go back into my hibernation... Bitch is gonna be watching all these shows again, so this shit ain't never happening again. I'm gonna hold you again. to that, and I'm gonna be watching it. You're gonna be getting my feedback. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be getting your feedback. I mean, you're gonna be getting my feedback. <laughs> I was like, did you just like, you know, when like you're talking to someone, you're not sure if they're listening, so you say something random. I felt like that's what you just did to me. You're like, gonna be getting my feedback. <laughs> Can you please not give me anything to do with I will your feet? not give you my feet back, Ooh. but my feedback will be a coming. Um. Anyways, don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say Kyle Richards. Joyce. She was from... You really picked one season Housewives, and I'm pissed. I did not pick one season Housewives. <laughs> Lydia was on two seasons. Two separate one seasons. <laughs> and I did this because you did East Coast for me, and I did West Coast She's for you. She's also Puerto Rican, so that should have gave it away. Yeah, exactly. She was Miss Puerto Rico. Yeah, exactly. So this is on me, okay. but, you know, I'm going to... Um, it back but to I only had two franchises to choose from because Salt Lake didn't really do a trip. So I only had to go between those Valid. two. Valid. That's a good So point. I had to really dig around and try to find some. It was not easy. Okay. 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 Well, okay. you want your last one because you know what I did? Mm-hmm. Is I forgot to write where they went. <laughs> oh, no. I remember now. I remember now. I feel like this gives it away, though. I'm going to ask you two. You'll get both of them. Okay. But the last one for real okay. is Real Housewives of New Jersey, Oklahoma. Um... Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma, Margaret. where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. Oh, ho, ho. 
ha. And also The Home of Twister, my favorite movie, where I'm going to go to the Twister Museum one day. Um, I mean, we've had so many opportunities to go the to town We've gone into Dallas. And we've of never... Wakita. Well, we it's joked... four hours past Dallas. We joked last time we were going to Dallas, we were like following the map. And then one <laughs> said like this way to Oklahoma. And we joked, they were like, wait for Chase to peel off to the left and keep going straight up to Oklahoma. So we go to the Twister Museum. Twister Museum in a little town called Wakita. Um, yeah, catch me not on that trip with you, but I fully support everyone. <laughs> I'll drop y'all off, go you know, pick y'all back up on the way home. On, that works for me. We could do that. We could make that <laughs> or work. Or I'll lock my doors tight. And just be, you're going to pretend like you're pulling up to get us and just keep driving. I'm like, good luck, guys. Bye, bitches. <laughs> um, um, correct. Right, Margaret, because her friend, um, she was going down like a childhood cancer benefit that she worked with, the lady on the case. Yep, and they like hated it so much, all of them. It was actually. And Jennifer talked so It was bad. Jennifer's first season. And Jackie's first season. Yes. And we were like, wow, Jennifer, you're the worst. I think actually everyone liked it but Jennifer. And like Dolores yeah. stayed out in the trailer out it back and it was fun. super nice. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. I mean, it was a random ass trip for like Housewives, but like it wasn't bad. Super random, but looked pretty cool actually. Yeah, good job. Already ready for your last yeah. one? I think I won this. We'll give it to you. <laughs> you think? Season six, Real Housewives of Orange County, location San Antonio, Texas. I don't know why I had a feeling you were going to ask that one because of, like, Texas theme. Yeah. I'm going to... I don't know, but I know who was there, and it was Gretchen, and I'm going to say it was Gretchen's trip. Yes. She went because she was going to be on the local San Antonio News yes. talking was about Was it her, her purses? purses? I, I just... Uh, I, I that all the time because she's like, I, you know I am. I went to school in Texas because I think she went to Baylor, right? I don't know. I'm pretty sure she went to Baylor, and she was like, you know, it's like my stomping grounds, blah, blah, blah. Isn't went. that such a random trip? I was, like, whenever... Um, I was think because you were talking about like I was like thinking of other yeah. OC trips, and I actually thought you would ask, um, uh, what was um no, it's actually too obvious Ireland because that would obviously make Megan King, King Edmund. Edmund. Um, but I did think of that one, and I wanted you to ask that one because I just always said, "Are you an O'Toole? Are you an O'Toole? Are you, <laughs> are you guy an O'Toole? was like not being literal. He's like you could tap anyone on the shoulder, and their last name should be like O'Toole. <laughs> Hello, are you an O'Toole? Do you know an O'Toole? You this look one, just like my mom. Like, my the mom's side by cousin side. was an O'Toole. She's like, oh my god, we have to be related. Oh, that was so cringy. But anyways, back to San Antonio. That was such a random trip. Yeah, I remember it so vividly because I was like. Why are y'all in Texas? Why are y'all in San Antonio? And it was the first time Alexis left gym. Yes. She was and they out. did like bull riding and like she this was drinking thing. straight vodka. It mm-hmm. was insane. It was, it very was wild and it was so long ago. But that one, that's a weird trip that like was burned into my brain. And I didn't remember if it was Gretchen, but it was like yes. along the lines of like someone random ass planning that trip. Gretchen makes sense. It was Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> <laughs> scratching my nerves. Okay, well, Cassie, I think you won. All right, I think. Oh, you scared our little co-host, Bing Bing. <laughs> my paper's uh, gone. I was like, oh, <laughs> Chase is losing it. I'm y'all. angry. Um, you, well, you know what? Good for you. Are you ready? To, I'm proud of you. Are you ready for this most exciting moment right now? What? To go into the Real Housewives of Potomac premiere? Yes. You know, get back into something that I know, and that yes. is talking about the episodes that. I will always be able to do. Yes, yes, yes. We kick things off, um, and the producers are talking, and they say, in one word, describe what last year was like. Giselle says toxic, and Wendy's kind of like, oh, you never know who your friends are. Mm -hmm. They do a flashback montage of last season, and all the chaos proving why Potomac is one of the best franchises on TV right now. They also had the highest ratings of premieres really? of any of the franchises right now. And they have a good time slot, like yeah. that Sunday night. Mm, mm-hmm. So they're kiss. killing it. We also have Wendy doing a silhouette challenge. Remember that was a big thing on like TikTok and yeah. Instagram? Um, with an imitation of the nude interlude, which sounds like a little sexy party. It turns out it is. <laughs> it turns out it is. Very much so. It's a very sexy little party with two surprise guests, which we will find out who they are later. <laughs> so weird. <but laughs> <laughs> so weird. The name of the two guests are interesting um we see giselle's west wing i felt like that was very shady it was just producers. i was say it was just a house yeah I with a little they did that. garage attached to it that was shady right for sure because giselle just fancies herself so uh amazing and grand and she literally she decorates from herself. like no we don't know where the tj max 2002 i'm um, like tj max is the shit i don't know where she's getting hers from because <laughs> that is not any tj max i've ever seen Robin and Juan are also building a house. Yeah, Can't... Ashley, new baby, and new Michael. Baby. Or not new baby yet, but pregnant with Michael talking about sex. That was wild. No one wants I that. I cannot stand this man. He's literally just like, yeah, yeah. She's having to wonder if he's going to cheat on her again while she's pregnant. 
it did go through my mind, like, what would happen. I was like, are you kidding I can't me? believe she is still with him. There must be some good-ass money in that bank account. But she has something that she would have gotten a load of money if, like, she had I know. Left. She had a prenup that she'd get $5 million plus, like... It's even sadder because I think she genuinely loves the man. Like, the, they're that... That's an interesting twist that I think we're not ready to actually mentally take in. I can't. But I think you're right. I can't process it either. Y'all know Ooh. he's my sleep paralysis Ooh, demon. Ooh, 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 ooh. Candace's stepkids are staying with her at her new house for a month. Candace trying to be a mom is... Awkward. So awkward. She's so uncomfortable. She does not have a maternal bone in her body. And you don't have to. But whenever she tries to like be like, we're so happy they're here. That's literally me around kids, though. I'm so (laughs) awkward. I totally get it. It's just how she's trying to like introduce Giselle to the kids. And she's like, yes. She They're gets here. all the time that she has pretty eyes. <laughs> Moving on to this. A Dorothy's just... room. We have to talk about Candace's mom's room. She has a life-size cutout of herself yeah, in the room. in the corner. That she likes to sleep with staring at her. I'm sorry. That lady. And she's uh, like a therapist, wild. right? Or she's like a psychiatrist. She is, yeah. Well, I'd like to know what's going on upstairs in Dorothy's mind because she is wild and I kind of love it. And, I, okay, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but... They at some point say that Chris is um, Candace's manager now. Like, oh, did, I didn't you hear, hear that. did you hear that? Okay, maybe I misheard this, but I'm pretty sure I heard that Chris is managing her music career. Maybe that's it. Uh, was a um, to next episode, like maybe, the preview. Because I don't remember that. But what happened to him being a chef? I am so confused. They talk about it because when Giselle comes over, yeah, and she says I'm hungry or where's like some food or something, and Chris comes downstairs and he goes into the kitchen. And she asks, like, what's going on with you? Like, what's he doing for work? And uh, Candace says, he is teaching those virtual online cooking oh, classes. Oh, yes, I did. Okay. So he is still doing, like, chef-y stuff. I didn't hear this manager thing, but I'm very curious. I will come back to that. Maybe I'll try to fact check. Maybe it was in the preview. Well, they also, like, but... hyped him up so hard because he brought in a plate of cut-up fruit. I was like, that's something that I could manage to do. But also, like, I'm just so curious. It was like, his whole journey was like, he's going to open a restaurant. He's like, had a restaurant or whatever. And I'm I like, think it's a pandemic. What happened? But I don't even feel like last season, whenever it wasn't pandemic, we, like, talked about his restaurant anymore. Doesn't he just do, like, catering kind of restaurant Maybe. style? Because remember when he catered that picnic? And it did look amazing. It was, like, all this, like, chicken and, like, mac and cheese and stuff. It looks bomb honestly maybe i was Y'all just i i got food. some weird sound bite that he was now her music manager and i was like not a good idea no. but check back next we'll week. have we'll to look that into out. that for sure i'll rewatch the preview for next week but giselle is like you know covid's come between me and jamal and it's like bullshit. i don't think covid came between i think it was other women that's what and candace his dick said. came in between <laughs> that's what candace like in her interview was like oh really is that what we're gonna try to blame it on i think it's the embarrassment of last year is what's come between them because after all that happened jamal still was like making statements like i'm single now bull. yeah and like remember after like can or not candace it was monique brought that binder he had like a binder and was like all this stuff yes. was like Oh, How Instagram petty. Live. It was like, so cringy. you are a preacher and you're over here getting in a petty mess of like Imagine a housewife's going fight. And seeing that as like your preacher after all I this can't. that's come out. And you know what? The thing is, all of that is like a show, a, a clown and, as they say, a clown and pony show or a whatever show. A what is that saying? Show, a pony show? Or sh- what is it? I don't know. It's not a clown, is it? I, mean, I don't think so. A something and pony show. Yeah. Tricks and pony show? I don't know. But it's like, I feel like that's what kind his- of creatures in general yeah. so i feel like whenever you get on tv people are like more like i'm gonna go to him because it's like a fame thing yeah. people want to be like like take advice from someone that's relevant and famous and it's probably just made him even more it's just so, so bizarre to me yeah. i have such a hard and time all of the cheating and all of that is like so against the like religion, religion aspect like, so it makes no sense a, but the bible says if that's what you follow like exactly. you would think that that would be the last person doing it the man who's like the holiest of the yeah church. so that's why i'll never understand that but very that's interesting not for us to understand but we kind of end that on like all right interesting we'll see and we head over to karen spring cleaning you know what i'm finding karen and ray really cute i am loving it i totally yeah. totally agree they give us a few little snippets because we mentioned that they were going to renew their vows i think we had talked about that whatever like breaking news was going on a few months ago so she says like there's always a taboo that comes with it and their daughter raven came up with the idea of so nice we had to do it twice i like that i like it i'm still nervous i am too but i did love that she acknowledged that like Oh, vow renewals aren't great and don't have a good track Especially record. Especially on housewives. And I'm pretty sure like she's seen like people say that online and oh, she's I'm like, sure. Okay, y'all are right. So I like that little nod 
Like, so all like, the Bravo okay, accounts were I'm commenting on her it. when she said it. Like, and we were one of them. I was like, no, yeah, babe, don't do this. Don't do it. So I think she heard it. We also get a um, flashback to young Hot Karen, which is like probably the best thing I've ever seen in my entire she's life. She's literally just like sitting on the yes. couch, like posing, I posing, just, like, posing. Producers are so funny on Potomac. They with really things. are. They really have fun with it. And yes. I think that's why everyone has so much fun with it as well. Yes. And she mentions that she traveled without letting him know where she was going like 25 years ago before they got married. And he took the ring back and he was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Young Hot Karen. Young Hot Karen. Out was, to play. I was, ooh, what a moment. <laughs> they're so shady though. The producers, I oh, love it. So shady. But they're going back. <laughs> and forth between like Giselle um, also still talking mm-hmm. to Candace and she's like there's no friendship left to stop it between me and Karen and then it goes back to Karen's house and she's like she's misdirecting her anger towards me when she should be anger at her man and god forbid she turn the mirror on herself and find all the damn cracks I'll be praying Ooh. for her though I was like oh Karen came to read I mean, we are only five minutes into this episode <laughs> literally five minutes in oh. but Love it nonetheless. And I love Ray and Karen right now. Especially when they get that text from uh, Wendy inviting them to the party. Yeah, so it's like a montage of everyone getting the clips Uh from the nude interlude invite Uh from uh, Wendy. And everyone's kind of just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, Ray's like, I need to get my glasses. Hold on. And Karen was like, why the hell do you need to get your glasses? You do not need to get your glasses. I am deleting this. You are never watching it again. And I was like, oh, iconic. It was I so love cute them. and flirty. I'm like, oh. Like they, sitting I, on it. Even when it's cute and flirty, though, it's still a little bit awkward. The way she oh, fed on him it yeah. was like a little, but I love it. I mean, it. the thing is, Karen's still putting on a show for us. Oh. But I love it. Oh, it's totally. I love it. The grand dame still reigns supreme. Uh, oh. Wendy got new boobies because she breastfed. She said she also got a few other things done, which we will get into later. The producer, producers, 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 <laughs> shady as always. Ask Robin in her interview. When are you gonna get married? When's the wedding? And she gives about ten different excuses of why she can't because there is a pandemic. Is anyone surprised that Robin is not married yet, um, or even really planning the wedding? I would be shocked if she was married. Now. Me too. Yeah, that I would. That would. Bizarre. That would shock me. You're right. A hundred percent. But Robin and Juan go to a smoothie place, and he makes some comments, which. Maybe she's dealing with some depression throughout the I pandemic. I think so. And like, because I don't feel like it's like her to like, I know she's late everywhere, but to like sleep till 10 and then just like order the kids food and then not leave the house till two o'clock. She's like, there's nothing to look forward to. And I feel like Juan was really discrediting what a lot of people emotionally were feeling like last year. Yeah. Like, what's the point of getting up? Yeah. Like, it doesn't. I just wonder if it was his way to like, I'm not going to like, not let you get away with it, but like. I'm going to point it out because this is the only way that I feel like it's going to motivate you is to kind of call you out and like be like, blah, blah. I don't think that's the best way. But like, him being a coach, he's like, pick it up, step it up. You got to do this. You got to do that. your partner that's not attractive to me when they, you know, that, that was, that a was little like a far. bit of a comment that I was like, that's a bit shitty. But also, okay. So I understand like this is definitely COVID and like induced like a little depression. Yeah. Not, uh, I'm not a, obviously doctors, but it just seems like it could be that. Yeah. Um, but Robin always is kind of base level, like lethargic seeming. Anyway, she, she doesn't unless she's dancing. She doesn't really give us much, right? Like, yeah, she stands up on the dance floor, but other than that, and it's, it's like very... that's okay. But it's like interesting for uh, Juan to be like, "Wow, you're not giving us all this energy." Blah blah. blah. I was like, yeah. "When did Robin ever really give she's us that much energy?" Give us nothing. That's kind of her. So yeah. I was like, "Okay, I can clearly see because she even admitted, yeah, I'm, the COVID is getting to me." Yeah. But besides that, I'm like, Juan, this is kind of who you're married or. Gonna marry again. I'm, yeah. That's kind of who Did she you is. love the producers put ex husband slash fiance on the bottom of his? <laughs> I love that. Also, him saying he wants another kid was a wild two, twist. Two daughters. Yeah. He said, I want four kids total. I want at least two more daughters. Yeah. And it's interesting to me when, like, husband and wives or couples in general, men, women, all of the above, talk about wanting more kids when they've already done all the work and their kids are like in their teens i know like can you imagine starting over like it always felt fake to me whenever kyle did it it felt fake to me when melissa did it this feels genuine i feel like one really wants a few more kids yeah also like the irony of him ever saying to her i feel like you're being lazy you're doing this when he literally like left her whenever she was like and cheated on her whenever she had the two young boys kids. when they were young yeah. so the fact that if any man ever had the audacity to speak me <laughs> speak to me like that after doing something like that i'd be like you can like absolutely like f off like yeah don't try I'll be done again. I like Robin and Juan, but their relationship still confuses me. It's very baffling. Yeah, it's, it's really baffling. weird. I mean, and so does uh, Candace's and Chris's, and we go back to them. We go back to them with the, the step kids are so sweet though. Like the stepson no, was helping with like the math. They're and... very sweet, but Candace again does not have any sort maternal. of maternal bone. In her body. No, she definitely doesn't. <laughs> 
Um, then we go to Wendy's house. This is the meat of the episode right this was the This was my favorite part. Some people had an issue with it. I was like, get the hell over it. When she gave her kids the titty cupcakes. I thought it was funny. Little, I thought it was hilarious. I, I love that. Okay. If like, they had been like, this looks like a big old nipple cupcake, then I would have been like, okay. Yeah, like but if, they like, are innocent young kids. And also if the parents were like, oh my God, look at that big old yeah, nipple cupcake. Yeah. To their, like, that would be a yeah, little weird. Yeah, that would have been weird. But they are like, oh, they don't know what it is good exactly. they don't need to but it's a cupcake go enjoy our sweet it's little fun. innocent children it eating is their cupcake. funny like i think people that's that is not gonna scar her kids in the fact that people had an issue with it is just like so yeah. stupid i will say wendy does look good wendy looks she looks incredible. incredible i love that this party is simply to reveal herself i love it i'm sorry you're talking about happy and ness <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have to call our episode this week Happy and Ness. Like, this is, that has to be the title. I was we just... always talk about titles later, but Happy and Ness is the best thing I've ever heard in my entire I just, life. Like, that's one word for two I different know, moves. Like, it's it. hilarious. I love that. Like, I would much rather be happy than Ness. Like, <laughs> like, like Loch Nessie, Nessie Monster. Yeah, like the, the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> we've got the happy one and we've got the Loch Ness Monster <laughs> over here. Pick your poison. Let's do this. Uh, but all the girls are heading over to Wendy's house that is far as hell away from everybody <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes from like everyone Jeez, essentially I, you know you well, can't be even I going 15 all my minutes friends that live in the suburbs but a few people have moved out and it is a journey and it is a trek and i love them and i go see them as much but, possible but i'm not gonna go and that's 40 minutes i will say that's add 40 more minutes the, to it no yeah <laughs> The answer is no. I could never. I was just shocked by that because she's not even in. I know some of them lived in like Baltimore and like some in like yeah. part of Virginia, but that was so damn far when they showed it on it's the like map. It's like north of Baltimore. Yeah, like, like over. Well north. Very wild. So from Potomac itself, it's an hour and like fifteen minutes. Insane. So that's wild, and everyone's everyone is complaining about. Everyone's it. complaining. They're all like, "Where the hell are we?" I did love whenever. So all the girls are showing up. Robin and Giselle get there first, yes. and they're mentioning like seating arrangements. Blah blah. blah. They. They see that Mia, Karen's friends coming. They're, They're like, like, who, who the, the hell, hell is Mia? this? Which I was like, guys, Y'all you know, know who, who Mia is. is. She was casted on the show <laughs> yeah. like three months prior. But Giselle has to produce it and like try to make it like a crazy thing. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but I did love whenever, um, what's her name showed up? I don't know. Ashley showed up. <laughs> and she was wearing those damn hunter boots. And she gets out of the car she's like, there is damn snow up here. I, how north are we? Oh, I didn't she, hear her yeah. say how damn north are we. <laughs> yeah. I was thought you were going to say when she changed into her heels. Oh, that, that was did my not next thing. I, I was like, oh, babe, that's Ashley, painful. I laugh so much at Ashley, though, because, like, she does not give two shits what she does on camera. Like, she's over here in hunter boots no. and a skin tight dress. Ashley does not have and style then, at all no. either. And then she puts those, like, uh, stilettos on, like, strappy shoes, and then just, like, leans back on the couch, and they're not even done. They're got, and everyone's like, You don't have to do this. Well, she's like, Ugh. They couldn't I'm get them on. Like, Giselle tried to button them up and they wouldn't close. Because she's 10 days away from giving birth. Like, obviously your feet are freaking swollen. Like, are it's, you kidding me right now? It just makes me laugh so hard. Um, but they do introduce that Mia whenever it shows them at the table. They flash to Karen and Mia in the car. And they do introduce her and she says a little bit about herself. Um, and she owns the joint chiropractor. Yeah. Which I see remember, all the time. Remember I... You broke that news. I did. I honestly did not know anything about her. You predicted Except that. her tagline. And I'm so happy. I was right on about something and it felt good. It and honestly felt good. You nailed that about the chiropractic. Yeah. But felt she good. owns all these joints. I see those all the time. Like we have them around. I don't here. okay, so I think it's a franchise. This is yeah, not is. to like um like oh, diminish yeah, her success. Like I think she founder. owns like franchise like for, but she has a bunch of them. So she's oh, still doing great. Gosh, I think. Shoot. That's what I think it is. Because oh, I, I think she said that. up a, along the East Coast. Yeah. She, she didn't did. say down here. So I think she does like franchises, which is amazing. She has multiple. The way she said it, she was like, "I I own a business called the Joy." But I, yeah, she should have said, "I own a franchise of it." I think so. Who knows? But either way, businesswoman, successful, doing shit. I actually really liked Mia. I think that she gave. She's some, weird. She's quirky. In the right she's way. Weird. Um, she gives us everything we want a housewife to give us. Exactly. Really. She doesn't even know how old her husband Married is. Married to a man thirty something years older. Not. We shorter. don't know how old because it was thirty eight. It went down to thirty. It went up to thirty two. We don't know. Four but grandkids. did I love it? Yes. Four grandkids is like thirty six years old. And looks like that. Yeah. Bam. Love it. I so. I think that was kind of all that happened until they went to sit down, right? Well, they kind of like talked to mention whenever Karen walks in the room. Oh yeah. In her interview, she says something like, "She should have came right in and apologized to me for talking about my family," but instead, she's like, "Too." She says she should have come in and said it to me, and then I would have said, "You know what? I get it because you're too worried about that Ray doesn't love you anymore." That's talking about you her know family. What? Okay, like, exactly. Um, preach, what's the Cassie, trade-off? Because 
Giselle has done nothing but talk about Ray's limp dick. Yes. Being old. Yes. Karen not loving being him. Poor. Being poor. That is Karen's family. Exactly. So Giselle being like victimized by like her being a bitch about Jamal, who did all of the things that Karen said. Also, Karen didn't talk about her children. No, she talked she about talked Jamal. About Jamal and Jamal, let's be honest, is not a stand up guy. We know this. Yeah. Her dad talked about. Yes. Um, d- oh Jamal. my God, that was so, insane. He, her dad hated Jamal. That's, but you're over here getting mad at Karen. I'm like, it's just, that's what I'm saying. Giselle is, every Housewives group has a self producer. And Giselle is that. So yeah. she's making up that she's mad at Karen for talking about her family because she has nothing else to do. And then as she does that, talks mad shit about Karen's family. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't make any sense. It's so dumb, but it's it's typical Giselle. So Then we do, we sit down and Wendy goes into about a 35 minute monologue <laughs> about some tweaks, some things that have happened after she had her daughter. And she rest, literally, they were like fast forwarding the montage throughout, which always makes me laugh when someone keeps talking. Um, and then she introduces Happy and Ness, as we talked about. And she also says... Our like, favorite new housewives. Our favorite two new housewives, <laughs> Happy and Ness. Forget Mia. Um, they, but yeah, she's like, I got some other tweaks too. And she won't say what though. She's like, I will totally own what I got. But then she wouldn't say what the tweaks were. Well, that was weird. So uh, uh, I saw she tweeted like after okay. that she claims that the editors cut out that she got a BBL. Oh, so she did get a BBL. Yeah. But because whenever she went to the doctor, is, he was like looking at her stomach too. I was like, so she got something to her stomach as well. But also the thing is, if they cut it out, they had to do it. It it had to have been hard to cut that out because you were literally telling everyone, "Oh, I I'm not going to do her. that." I don't I'm believe not gonna her do, for a second. I don't think so either because she kept saying they kept asking her, "What else did you do?" And she's like, "I just got little tweaks." Like there was no moment where she's like, "I got it." Well, Unless it was at the end of the party or well, something. Well, no, because she said, like, oh, like, I just got some tweaks, blah, blah, blah. And Mia said, well, what did you get done? And she said, well, what did you get done? I and she Mia was... said, lip injection fillers. I got my coochie worked on, my ass, my boobs, everything. So, yeah. like, she was super I awesome thought about Wendy was so rude to Mia for she, no she reason. Was. She no was. reason. I it think made she no felt sense. like Mia snapped on her whenever she but said, well, she what did you get done? But didn't. she didn't. No, I, I agree. This, the tone was about, she even kept saying, I can't stop looking at Happy and Ness because yeah. they look so good. Yeah. And then she was like, did you do anything else? Which all the girls asked her a million times before that. Yeah. And then she like snaps on her and she Mia handled it her. great. I loved it. I thought Mia handled I literally wrote, yes, Mia, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Like she's handled it very well. Owned every single thing that she's had done. Yeah, she's and like, I'm not ashamed of it. I love it. I, I love loved it. it. It's exactly like when you get shit done, like just own it. No one has an issue with it. If you love the way you look, we love it for you. But also. But she, don't set these unrealistic beauty standards and say, oh, I didn't have that She done. just had a reveal. Yeah. Like, and you're going to get mad that a girl asked what else you've done? Is she going to get mad at the producers because they showed a flashback of her butt before and then her exactly. butt now? Exactly. So like, but she I clearly got done. I think they did that, that's probably why she clarified about the BBL. For sure, because there's no way to deny it at that point. Yeah. And then they start talking at the table about how they all just want to collectively get on as a group. And Giselle's like, we can't do that because I'm never going to get along with Karen. And at this point, I think they started speaking in code because Karen alleged about Giselle's hot, fiery box, but Giselle seemed to know what Karen was talking about. Um, and then she started talking about you're a broken whore from Hampton University. I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? No, but I think the hot box is, I think she's like a, a STD. ST, that was yeah. what I was thinking too on that. But and the Hampton University, I don't know. Is that a school she went to? Maybe. She said like the whore from Hampton. I'm like, is that like a reference to something? Yeah. And then of course Giselle's only comeback is like Ray's broken dick. Yeah. And then Karen, which I think is a way better comeback, is like, well, at least my man's not fucking everybody. And Giselle's was like, well, at least it works. I was like, oh, girl. Ew. That's not a. Oh my god! But that's, that's like not the worst that's not a win. That's not a win that Jamal's dick works, so he can go around fucking everybody. Oh my god, that's horrible. And that's what Giselle. And she was proud of it. She's like, "Yeah, his dick works." I was like, "No, Giselle." She no. keeps alluding to all these things. Like, I have so much real, true tea about Karen. I'm gonna start sprinkling it throughout the season whenever I want. It's like, but do you? But do I honestly you? don't think either of them have anything on the other besides what we already know. Exactly. So I, I think mean, that's just I, a waste of a like fight what they're doing the right biggest now. shock was what monique did no one will ever top that no. whenever she busted out the binder and alleged everything about jamal and it was all pretty much true. yeah i mean the wildest thing and they did a flashback at the beginning of the season or beginning of the episode when uh monique bust out the back door and ran through the parking lot that will never not be insane that and was i loved it unreal. <laughs> it was so crazy i'm freaking real but i would say i would give this premiere 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i, I agree it was perfect we got updates on everyone i loved it i'm so excited for the season 
the premiere got us some lettuce throwing. We got us some fights. Yes. We have fun moments. We have it all. I think it's going to be a great season. I'm I was excited. So looking forward about to About the premiere and the preview. I hope that happy and Nesca throw in tagline. <laughs> that could be a moment. And, oh, that would be good. <laughs> that could be a real moment. But that was pretty iconic. Yeah. On to our other show this week. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills entitled A Pretty Meltdown. Also loving Beverly Hills. Like, you gotta say are, it every week because you were such an a I And I will keep saying it because I was a hater. And you I've were. been a hater for seasons, which I think is valid for the past seasons. But this one, huh, it's hitting right. Yeah. It just is so light, so fun. It's not even that light. Well, Erica's like, is very dark. I'm I'm sorry, like, guys. Are we watching the same show? But is it? I think it's because I kind of in it, am enjoying well, the Erica like, demise like of it all. Know it, so like watching it play out is very interesting. It's very interesting. I'm really liking it. We started um, off where the ended last yeah. week with the ugly leather pants conversation. And Sutton does in her interview, she goes, I was wrong. I think they were pleather, not leather. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus, <laughs> Sutton. Um, but Garcelle is down with Crystal in the backyard. And she's like, the word violation was a lot. So maybe you guys can just like have yeah. a conversation, come to like a middle ground. And Crystal is standing firm on it still. I think Crystal could have been a tiny bit at this moment. Um, I agree, but I also have to commend her for standing her ground. All these girls want to, you to do, and a lot of people in general, just like cave. And she kind of yeah. does cave a little bit because she eventually does say sorry for how it made you feel. Which I think, you know what, they and kept she saying. she only did that because they said about her I, father being manic. They were and like, I felt like that was, really was she should have said sorry for that. I agree. I think because that was maybe a little bit too far because she just gave you the tidbit about herself yeah. and her family. And you kind of said something that was a little triggering, I would say. So I am happy she said that. But I am also happy she apologized for the only little thing she could see herself doing wrong. She's yeah. like, I still feel like violated was the right word. We're not going to. A, ever ever move so can't we just agree to disagree i just don't think they're ever gonna truly be friends no. and also why the hell are hot toddies such a thing on the show i know there was more this well, episode i think it's like randomly kind of like winter and they don't get that much cold in beverly hills so whenever it gets cold like that they like to drink their fair whiskey but it was just and... so random but they're showing it every time yeah every time they order a hot toddy it's like being shown that's what erica only drinks like, yeah and then garcelle it. ordered one too oh, I this episode I, I, it's like really I hyper like erica focused it. yeah it was weird but, but I did find it interesting when Crystal said, did something I do today trigger you? And Sutton was just like, just your general presence. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, but, Sutton. But also that was kind of like, okay, girl, you restarted this thing yeah. because she wasn't being mean to you. She didn't bring it up. You just were uncomfortable because you didn't get Garcella present. That's what it was. And That's you had to make it a big too. thing because you were embarrassed. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. But like you said, she does end up apologizing because they go back and forth for a second like, you want me to apologize for something you did. You're an awkward, inappropriate person, period. <laughs> it was that conversation. But they do end it on a half ass apology. All the ladies in their interviews were like, I don't really feel like they've really made up. Like, this wasn't a genuine apology. No. But, but I'm happy we didn't, like, like, it was fine. I'm happy it ended quickly at the beginning of the episode. Well, and, and it only ended because Queen Kathy moment of the week. We're going to just do it now. Um, whenever she says, we don't want to feel like we're pushing someone over the edge, that is mixed up. <laughs> Mixed up. I think we would all agree that it's messed up. Yeah, messed up. I think it's the right word. But there. we love how Queen Kathy says nothing correct, and that's she what we are here doesn't for. need to learn words. No, like, she, what does it matter? She doesn't. She she's just to know how to take good. money out of her ATM. Yeah, and, and, and like sleep till ten, wake up, laugh, have fun. Ha <laughs> ha. Is she on something? You think? Um. I, like I say, when people are just that rich and they're so out of touch with reality, I just call it eccentric. She might be on something. No, I don't, I, I mean, don't know. it doesn't really matter, but... Either way, you know. I want it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm into it. it. Um, but we get a four days later. Four days later. We got a lot of these time stamps on this we did. episode. Kyle, Kathy, and Dorit are positive with COVID. And weren't you saying last episode where we, you were asking if we were going to get that? Or we talked I about that at some I, yeah. point. You're like, are we going to see that? I the didn't think we yes. were going to. I thought it was before this for some reason. But it caused the whole group to have so to quarantine for two weeks. To do a lot of Romeo and Juliet style balcony speaking. <laughs> yeah. It was like, where art thou, Romeo, speaking off the balcony? I love that Garcelle was like, I'm literally Romeo if, and Kyle yeah. is Juliet and I'm down here. What the hell? <laughs> and it literally, Dorit did the same thing with Renna when she came around. So it was mm -hmm. like all these balcony scenes were Was that me. the only scene we saw Dorit in besides... Besides the opening, yeah. yeah. And like people are posting all over on Instagram. And a few people are like, okay, so we don't need Dorit back next season. And what a lot of people are thinking is that she probably had bigger storylines, but this Erica stuff took completely oh, over. Oh, that's So valid. editors probably had to 
We were going to see a lot of her wedding dress designing, I guess. Oh, I mean, did we want to? So maybe it's a good thing that we moved on. But during all this quarantining, we get some annoying Zooms because, you know, Mm -hmm. quarantine. Um, But we do find out that all the news comes out about Tom and Erica being sued for fraud. The crash victim articles are coming out. Like, everything is coming out. So, like, Kyle and Lisa are talking to Erica. Erica's obviously, like... I know nothing about this. She's like, these are just wrong. These are wrong. I, Why would I file for divorce? Yeah. For like this. Oh, and also the fraud divorce article comes out that this is a sham divorce yeah. to cover assets. So all of it is hit now. Everything is out. All the information yep. that we have is now being played out on the show. And producers ask her point blank in her interview, how did you first learn about the Boeing lawsuit? Immediately. I can't answer that. Yeah. It looks away like that. I'm like, uh, like she doesn't even seem like a real person at times. The way I would be like, look, I just really can't talk but about also, that. But also during this entire episode, she's going back between like, um, he's like, was essentially abusive emotionally to me. He controlled every aspect of my life. I was so miserable, blah, blah, blah. And then there's parts where she's like, he's mentally ill. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's like losing it. He's melting away. I was like, girl, what? Like, pick a lane of what like defense you want. Once again, our theme of this episode, pick a lane. You cannot. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> you also went from talking about this man like so highly and all these things. I really don't think if any of this had come out, if none of this had happened, I don't think she would have divorced him. Like, I think she would have just, and she said, earlier, I would Kyle, hold that man's hand until the day he died. Yeah. Like she said that. Kyle kind of said it too. She was like, yeah. um, I don't think Erica knew, but I do think she could have found out that it was all going to land and she was going to get out before it hit. Yep. Which is a form of still kind of like, I don't know, you should acknowledge it more than. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess I, there I are lawsuits. I Kyle said that, though, because I was kind of like, I think that's what we were all thinking at a moment. Mm-hmm. So the fact that our actual friend said that, too. Yeah. And the then, producer also said, why are you being named in this lawsuit if you're not a lawyer? And that's just like, I, that I don't know. That's the real question. That's the question. But I mean, girl, you're being named because he gave you so much of that money. And you're signed that wasn't on his, certain paperwork. And you're signed on certain paperwork. You've benefited from this money. Um, I'm not. Who knows if she knows? But it's yeah. like, at this point, all of that money we know is fraud money Mm -hmm. and you lived a lavish life of fraud money exactly you're gonna get in trouble exactly or at least like assets taken away you're gonna have something something's gonna happen so they kind of like we we see lisa and crystal go to erica's erica says her small house again little house with literally the best backyard i would say the cutest backyard ever i could just live in the backyard Um, drinking verve or voove or whatever so still fancy Uh um this is when kyle or garcelle goes to kyle's and we get kind of like a multiple layered scene of yes. everyone kind of being like, Garcelle's like, Kyle, you know, uh, Erica better than I do, but it's not looking great. And then Erica is over here, you know, doing her acting again while they're drinking champagne and kind of just being like, I didn't know this man. He's... People think Erica Jane brought down Tom Girardi. Tom Girardi brought down Tom yeah. Girardi. I have no idea what's coming next. Like, we don't even know what he's done, but he's made a mess for everyone that stayed loyal to him. Um, yeah, she kept saying the power balance is off between, like, the relationship I mean, it's and, crazy like, that she got with him when she was 28. Like, I mean, I, now, that is imagine? wild, but I don't know. Because there's this whole thing where she was, at that point, was kind of telling, like, Crystal and Lisa, like, if you don't know your finances, right. you need to investigate and blah, 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 blah. She's like, I never did that. I never asked where the money was coming from. And if I did ask, he shut me down. And I was like, girl... Again, not the energy you ever gave us. And yes, things do happen behind the scenes. I'm not trying to say that you don't put yeah. out some sort of front whenever things are going bad at home. But Erica, it's just so hard for me to believe that she didn't know. Everything feels what their like an Oscar like. winning performance. And like she's being coached every step of the way. And that's how I feel about it genuinely. I don't feel... I'm not saying I don't feel bad for her at all, but I don't feel like she deserves all of the sympathy, sympathy that she's trying to garner right now. The people that really deserve sympathy are the victims of his fraudulence. Exactly. And I, I, I don't know if she just can't talk about it, like, truly, because yeah. there is so many lawsuits. But I think one thing Twitter is also saying, and I, I agree, 
um, is that if she was sympathetic to the victim, she would have acknowledged them yeah. during all of this. Like yeah, instead, it's just never done instead that. she's painting Tom as mean, controlling, yeah. vicious, conniving. What was me? All of that, but it's not like oh my god, he's a horrible man, and I can't imagine these families what they're going through. That would have been the better angle because that would have yes. been like, look, you look human at least. Yeah, because at least you're acknowledging what people went through. It's not just you losing everything. Yeah, a lot of other people lost everything, and they have never had anything. They for never a long had time anything after trusting this man. Yeah. Who was a terrible person. Exactly. So that was interesting. But we get it a little lighter note when we go over to Rena's and we find out that, uh, is it Delilah or Amelia? I don't know why I just gave her an accent, but I wanted to. Rena is FaceTiming IL from Love Island. I don't know if y'all watch Love Island UK. I loved it. Okay. So I wanted to tell you, I now watch Love Island. Oh, the American US, one? And I'm super into it. Oh my God. So are we. We're all I'm caught up. I'm so into it. I just, I'm finishing the one that just came out yesterday. It is very overwhelming. If you don't watch Love Island, it literally comes on five days a week. That's why I love it though. But it's only an it's, hour. It's only an hour. Sundays is two hours. Which oh yeah. Is Some a lot. Sundays, not every Sunday. Oh, okay. Though. Last Sunday was two hours and I was yeah. like, why is this two hours? And Ooh, we have like, to do a tangent really quick. Okay. Who do you like? Like if you had to, which is your favorite couple? Favorite couple... I think the hottest guy, I can't think of his name right now, but he has like the white teeth. He's uh, Spanish. Oh, Will. Will. He's Colombian. Colombian. Yes. So hot. You think Will? I think the I tall think guy so from hot. New York is the hottest. Tall guy from New York. What's his name? Super buff guy. I can't think of his name right now. It's going to drive me nuts. See, that's a hard thing about Jeremy. this show. His name's Jeremy. Is like, because there's so many players. And people come in and out. Yeah, people come in and out. Um, I so I really like Will. Okay, I think he's the hottest. I don't like the new guy from Houston, Isaiah. Well, he's not from Houston. He's from Wisconsin. Oh, actually. that's true. That's true. He's only been here for two years. Yes. I don't. I he came in like a wet blanket. Yeah. Like he brought nothing. And Amy is gonna be the one that hits on every single guy. I mean, that's the game. So like, whatever. I'm not even hating but on her for it. That's not the game. That's true. I don't the really know the game. The game is to couple up, and you're in the strongest couple. And at the end of the show, America votes. And you win the money. The favorite couple, so right? So you should be smart. So like uh, Will and Kira right now, you know, so the Colombian yeah. guy and the girls from Hawaii, they are to like the strongest couple. And they're the ones right now that I could see winning the money because they're the ones who are sticking As of out now, a thousand percent. I really was so surprised about Cache and Cinco breaking up. I was not, sorry guys, spoiler alert, but I was not expecting it. But Trina, love her to death in that makeout challenge. Obsessed. She was clawing. But Licking up so the neck. Disappointed in Cinco because Cinco said himself, "I have this strong I emotional know. connection." So basically, you're just going with the person that you want to bang. I more. think you. I, yeah. Literally, I was gonna say, Cache has an incredible personality. Yes. But he's Trina like, is like given that like sex yeah. appeal and like licking his neck. And so she's made it very clear that she's very sex positive, yeah. very sex forward. But it was interesting because Cache was like giving Trina like, or they were talking about him, and she's like, "I'm not gonna do that to you, girl." And you know what she did? She did is it. doing it. It hasn't happened yet, but it's like happening. Oh, or it's maybe happening. it did happen yeah. already. I didn't like I said, I haven't watched yesterday's like episode, it's, but it's happening. Have you seen the three new girls that came in? One of the girls is from Houston. So I just started I I turned it off when you got here at okay. them arriving. So you can't say anymore. Oh, we but have to I do love like two a Houston love people island. though. Yes. Oh, a bonus we have to talk about. And the new girl is from Houston. She's like I'd say probably the prettiest girl in the villa. She's yeah. very, very pretty. I did like, I can't think of his name either, but he's like the curly haired white guy that was with Shannon. Yeah. I liked him at first. Until. But I wanted her to pick that weird blonde haired guy just so he got kicked out of the house. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Whenever she's still into him. Oh, no, she's obsessed with him. She's yeah. never, ever going to kick Whenever him. they got ready to go for the girls' day yeah. and she came out of the room, you barely see it, but she hugs him before she leaves. Oh, yeah, and then she's come back in and she gives him kisses and stuff. She's, like, trying to pretend like uh, he's in the doghouse, but he's not. I don't know what he was thinking. She's not going to win with him. That's And she's probably, yeah, she doesn't stand a chance at this point. I, okay, love Love Island. Yes. I'm obsessed. We'll do I don't know love what Island catch-ups. I was doing. I was missing it. I, I need to go back and watch them in the UK. My brother's been trying to get me to watch it's, Love Island for so long. We watched them on my roof a few weeks ago, but we That's were all, true. we'd all been drinking and kind of fell asleep on I, top of my roof. Yeah, I was like, I fell asleep at the table, so. Producer Joe came <laughs> to my house after he got off work, and he walked up, and we had all the lights on the roof and, like, the TV. He was like, I thought there was a rave going on up here, and we were just watching Love Island UK, like, season two. Like, Which, was, Love Island UK is a rave. It's it like is, a Ibiza beach party every episode. I'm obsessed with Love Island yeah. UK. But th- this season of Love Island, oh my god. I'm so happy you're watching. Yes, I'm in. I meant to tell you that, but this was the perfect yes. moment. Yes, so we're going to start having a Love Island watch party. So I love it. I'm having so much fun with it. We should it. do a Love Island finale party. And we should come and we should couple up and have a whole thing. Oh my God, let's do it. We have to vote on which couple we like the most of us. Uh, and it's going to be <laughs> you and Joe are going to vote for you and Joe and me and Joel's are going to vote for Joe's me Joe's definitely going to vote for y'all. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm going to vote for you and <laughs> Uh, but yes, we are going to do a bonus on Love Island because I love it so oh much. Oh my god, this is like the best thing ever. Okay. Sorry guys, we literally, we had a that talk. That was wild. Told you we've been cocooning the last three days, we haven't talked, <laughs> yeah. and now I'm glad here we are. Now you can tell that we have, yeah, truly, we haven't. But yes, Island and Delilah are dating and they're like, on, they've lived together for a while. <laughs> Did you say Island and Delilah? Isle. Oh, you said Island? Like, no, island. Love Island love and Delilah. Island. Um, but they are on an island or something, chilling out, living their lives. And I just had to point out really quickly that he was from Love Island, UK, like three years ago. And they put their ages on the bo- the bottom of it and said Delilah, comma, 22, IL, 22. He's like 25 or 26. And I Googled to confirm. Yeah, what a weird thing. Thought that was very strange. Just had to throw that out as a side note. Completely irrelevant. But but I like I like those little tidbits because I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, because I just remember watching him and I was like, there's no way he's yeah. that young. So we get a weird Lisa Renna going through her closet for vintage yeah. dresses because Lisa Renna's cool and she bought her own dresses. Putting like $1,000 <laughs> dresses on the ground. She had to yeah. put out that Versace custom made her a dress when she was pregnant. Okay, we've heard it before, Renna. Like, you're so cool, Lisa. I just want to get to um, Kathy Hilton howling at her dog sue <laughs> that's, that's what i'm here for when she walks outside howling at her dog because now that i have a chihuahua he kind of like barks and like he'll go Rawr! and i'll start doing it back to him so like we literally talk and are I you feel, kathy hilton i told y'all i'm a poor person's <laughs> kathy hilton i am like a lesser level kathy i loved it though we got a little kyle kathy scene and kyle breaks down kind of like Anxiety. all a robin of like potomac where it's just like COVID is overwhelming me right now, especially because she just had it. Yes. And the whole parenting aspect of it, it's, like, so challenging. She's, like, my biggest, like, she's, like, I've always felt myself and pride myself on being a good mom. Yeah. She's, like, I don't feel like I'm being my best self with Portia right now. And Portia's really, uh, she's She's being affected by COVID. She's, like, I feel like she's too comfortable being isolated. Like, other people are worried that their kids are missing their friends. I'm worried that Portia's so fine with being isolated and alone. Yeah. I don't want her to get into this, like, negative space. It's just nice to see what I took away from this. Kathy and Kyle just being sisters and really, like, bonding again. You know, it's yeah. just nice to see them It was together. cute. And she, Kathy even mentions, she's like, me and Kyle haven't always gotten along. Yeah. We get a little flashback to when Kyle was doing the show. We yes. all know that Kathy hated that show. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to say um, guys. Or we like, but that we say um and like a lot. So, so we're trying to cut it out, but it's a transition piece, and like, it's but, hard. Um, like it's a transition. <laughs> <laughs> it's like is this what a podcast for. We're just chatting like we chat to each other. I guarantee if we record ourselves at lunch, we probably say but um, <laughs> um and like. like a thousand times. <laughs> so don't be mad at us. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying, guys. Sorry if it's annoying, but we do go to. Uh, this was a bit of a chaotic scene as well. Sutton and her daughter. Her daughter's very quiet, and I felt like Sutton was really trying to put her, like, on the screen. What was that about? It was like, I was kind of thinking, did her daughter say, Mom, I want to be in a scene? Or was Sutton like, let's try to make me seem normal? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And I have a daughter. My oldest daughter, who's very meek and mild-mannered and very sweet and pretty. She was so, like, sweet and pretty and cute. It was just not... It's just so... The juxtaposition or whatever from... Rinna's kids being like models, Love Islanders, well, they start Scott saying, Disick, and then like the sweet little girl just wanting to go to college. Amelia's 19, Porter is 18. You guys should get together and hang out. I'm like, I do not see that happening. And then it flashes to Sutton's interview and she says, yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, well, even Porter was like, oh, yeah. we're adults. And also, didn't she say like their signs don't get along? No, she said they do get along. Oh, they along. do get along. Okay. Like, I was kind of hoping she said they didn't get along. And I was like, yeah. No, I think she said she's a Taurus and Amelia was a Gemini. And she said, so we get along great, I think. And I was like, girl, I'm a Gemini. And Tauruses are like bulls. Geminis are twins. It's not a great mix. And this is when we actually get the Dorit's one scene of the episode. It's actually a flashback. They don't even give Dorit a real scene. I was scene. like, I didn't write it down. Yeah, they didn't give Dorit a real scene. You know how you were saying the balcony thing? Yeah. That was oh. a black and white flashback when they start talking about um, all of the Erica stuff. Yeah, whenever Rena went and over there to talk. And that's the Dorit scene. You're right. That was the scene. Mm-hmm. I know. It's like actually kind of sad. But I've been saying it since like episode two. And it's really apparent now. Yeah. No, but... you, you actually caught on to it very quickly. I yeah. wasn't noticing it that much. Mm-hmm. But after you've said it, now it's all I noticed on, like, episodes. I'm like, she's never there. Not in there. So they kind of talk about that. And they're like, oh, this is grown-up talk. But, like, Porter stays because she's, like, a grown-up. So I think it's she's fine. She's 18 years old. Um, and they're kind of just talking about it. Um, but I did, like, one thing that Lisa said. So the daughter is like, oh, I'm in Kappa Gamma, blah, blah, blah. 
And Lisa was like, well, when I was in it, or when I was in it, it wasn't a nerd sorority. It was a cool girl sorority. I was like, you're sure you're calling son daughter's, also, son's daughter a nerd? Also, Rena went to school for like a month. One she semester. Said, or like, I don't even know it was a full semester. She's like, I was there for one month. I'm like, girl, you were not fully in a sorority. Stop. Can you even rush? I thought you had to like be at least like I'm not fall. a sorority girl. I don't I know no either. Idea. We should have asked Meg. Oh, we should have. <laughs> she, she would I know this. She's we'll get back. sorority girl. Um, but yeah, so that was a weird scene. It was clearly trying to well, it was make no some relatable. weirder than the next scene of Kyle and Erica going hiking. Erica gets there and just immediately starts pretty much bawling the second she gets there, and she's like, you know, being the po- the possible target of a federal criminal investigation, and like to have all these things said about me and have everyone questioning everything. It's lonely and everyone like turns on you, like you'd be surprised. She's like, I just hope something's clicking with Tom, though, and, like, someone's, like, checking in on him to make Because this sure. is the falling apart yes. section of this now. When- it's like he's not mentally capable. He's, like, out of it. He's been losing it for a while. I would tell him, what? like, oh, you can't hear, you can't see. Be like, what are you talking about? Yes, I can. Everything was so combative, and that's why I left. It's like, hold the hell up. So now this is a different angle that's like, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. But yet the entire past two episodes has been like, he knows exactly what he's, he's most, doing. Like, he's coming for me. He's yeah. doing this, but now he doesn't know what he's doing. But then she even says that within the scene, she's still like, you know, he's gonna make sure that I'm like, you know, like he doesn't want me to have anything. Like he resented me every step I took forward. Like she also like that. really brought out a, a deep voice that I didn't expect. Like right when she started crying, oh. and <laughs> Kyle was like, "Are you okay?" She's like, "It's okay, Kyle." <laughs> I was like, what? what? You kind of sounded like her there. That was scary. It's okay, Kyle. It was, well, the first time was a little more. It's okay, Kyle. <laughs> How did I not notice this? You have to now watch I it have back. I to go home and rewatch it was, this. Like, it was right times. when she sits down and she does oh, this weird deep voice. And I was like, Maybe that Where was her voice like, trying to from? stop it from cracking when she was about to cry. Maybe. But she did cry and she's not wearing waterproof mascara. Which I think is uh, intentional. Uh, we think that Camille Grammer also had something to say about uh-huh. this. She posted something along the lines of, on Twitter, uh, whenever we went to the Bahamas, she seemed to be just fine with her waterproof mascara. And then, of course, Lisa Renna commented whenever comments by celebs shared it and said, like, oh, you're an asshole on Twitter, reliving, you know, that thing that she sent her a few years ago. Well, she was like, oh, look at Camille seeking attention yeah. again. I was like... Still, uh, Rena, that's still your whole brand. On Twitter or something. Yeah, but Erica is just giving her full blown Oscar speech. I'd I'd go to hug him, and she'll go. <laughs> this was the scene. She goes, I'd go to hug him, and he wouldn't hug me back. It was like so it was, creepy. I said, Oh my god! The confessional when she slowly tells the story about how he didn't hug her back was a dramatic piece of work. It was like when Raven Simone had a vision on that. So Raven, she went. <laughs> And he wouldn't hug me back. That was us acting in Bravo Peace Theater back in the Honestly, day. I think that she was trying to give the levels that we were getting. Like, she was uh, killing it, but we were killing it a little bit. That's how good I, I wanted to be time. whenever I went to Stella Adler. She's achieving what I want. Maybe she's been getting private lessons via Stella Adler. Honestly, Zoom. Stella Adler is the acting classes, if we haven't mentioned it before, that Chase went to when he wanted to be a famous actor <laughs> in New York. We, hey, we I can leave still, you hanging on that inside it's joke. It's still possible. There's still many years of my life to live. Catch me in a movie one day. I don't know. I, I don't know if we ever finished telling the story fully one time because I know we told the other version of it with Joe being like in veteran situation. Um, Chase, one time we were at dinner <laughs> and he just like reveals to me, my fiance and his boyfriend Joe, that he had taken acting classes in New York with this woman called Stella Adler. And of course, like we thought it was hilarious because he'd never told us this before that he had these big dreams of being an actor <laughs> in New York. So as we were leaving the restaurant, my fiance went up to the waiter and was like, look, can you like do me a huge favor? We're about to leave. Will you like run up to Chase and say, can I get an autograph? Are you that famous actor from New York? And the guy did it. We were leaving the restaurant. He ran up to him. He's like, sir, are you that famous actor from New York? I literally screamed. Chase screamed and started running. It's like 10 o'clock on the side of it was, Houston Street. It was kind of honestly as if the paparazzi were at me. I literally like covered my face and screamed and I said, no, and just started sprinting down the street. I honestly have never laughed that hard in my life. And I think about this at least three times a week. And I hope that's not one of those you had to be there moments because really it's hilarious. It might be, but it was so funny. So I'm enjoying reliving it. So if y'all don't enjoy it, 
I wish no, we could I find am. like security footage from that night at the restaurant when you just run off. Because y'all, like, it was a strange man yelling that at me, and I, Are you the I, extra from New York? I never turned around and screamed at someone, and like cowered and ran the way I did. The guy had to have been like, "What is he my life?" He probably quit his job that night. <laughs> he was like, "This is the most psychotic thing." I'm he peaked. Doing. He was like, "I'll never meet a more famous person." I'm never gonna wait on the Chase Smith again. <laughs> On that note, uh, those are our shows this week, yeah. and I think we had some good ones. We've been talking for I, a while, guys. Yeah, sorry about that, but Ooh. you know what? We had a lot to talk about. There's so much going on. We have so many shows, so many good shows, yes. so much has happened this week. I mean, even with New York being crazy, we still had a lot of thoughts on oh, it. Oh, for sure. Because there's just so much playing out in the press. And I, you know what? I'm going to wrap that back up because I didn't say this earlier, but I think it's partially being played out in the press so people go back and watch the show someone did message us that as well chase mm-hmm. texted me that theory and then another person commented it i just like don't think that it's gonna draw people back in though i think that might have. i don't think so either but i think it's a latch like a last ditch effort. effort because what do they have to lose at this point not more viewers because they already all left <laughs> So, you're not wrong on that one. Uh, on that note, guys, like I said at the beginning, I'm so appreciative to the people that decided to take a second. Leave us five stars. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a minute, head on over. Leave us a comment. Leave us five stars. It's so appreciated. It gives our little podcast some love, some acknowledgement. We like it. So, if you have a second, please do that. Um, we enjoy talking. So, <laughs> Clearly. we will keep doing it every week. Um, so even if you don't leave us five stars, <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> we'll still be here. We'll still be here. We'll still be, I was going to say standing, we'll still be sitting. <laughs> yeah, we ain't going to be standing, that's for sure. But On you know what? Note, On that note, cheers. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.